Hi, and welcome to the session session of advanced SQL using MySQL database offered to you by the Clifton Park Half Moon Library. My name is Scott Barto, and um, uh, let's see, for those of you who um, registered with the, the Clifton Park Half Moon Library, um, you would have received an invitation to my Google Classroom. Uh, which um, will uh, provide uh, uh, exercises after each session uh, that we go over and also uh, will provide access to, um, to uh, contacting me with any questions you might have. So uh, let's, let's get right into the class. And uh, uh, so as a, uh, just a little review from last week, what we did was we covered the table aliases, and we also covered so we covered uh, table and column aliases, name aliases, and then we also uh, spoke a little bit about joins, and uh, we covered the three types of joins: inner join, left join, and the right join. Um, I, I had mentioned that we were going to talk about the cross join, but that's um, a little a little too advanced for this class. And so the last join I'm going to talk about is a self join, where um, where you join a table to itself using a table aliases, and you connect rows within the same table using inner joins or left joins. So the first example that we're going to cover is using a inner join. All right. And the reason why you have to use the table alias is a uh, table alias is that you want, don't want to repeat the same table name twice in a single query. That will throw an error in MySQL database. So you want to uh, you want to rep when you're referencing your table twice or more in a query, you want to use table aliases to distinguish um, between the, the, the different tables. So first we're going to cover um, using a self-join uh, that uses an inner that uses a inner join clause. So what we're going to be looking at is the employees table. And, and so on the employees table, uh, we want to do a self-join uh, um, upon itself, upon the employees table. And you're going to be using the employee number and the reports to column. Uh, the table employees has two roles. One is is the manager, and the other is the direct reports to the manager. So we're going to start our our code off with a select. And what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to put this on the, the next line. We're going to use a, a function called concat, short for concatenation. So concat is the function name, parentheses, and I'm going to do um, M is the table alias for the employees table. You'll see that later when we do our from, from clause. And I'm going to do the column last name, comma, and then I will do a single quote, comma, single quote. And then a comma after that. And then I will do M tele, table alias name, and then the column first name. And 
that's that's what we're concatenating. So we're using the function concat to concatenate the last name followed by a comma and then the first name. And we're going to say that this is as we're going to give the column, the concatenated columns, a uh, alias name of manager. All right. And then the next select, we're going to do a concatenation. So use the function concat. And then in parentheses, we're going to have the table alias E dot last name comma, space, single quote, comma, single quote, followed by a comma. And then we're using E to table alias name, first name. Close it with a closing parenthesis. And then now this is going to be as single quote, direct, uh, direct report. All right, so that's it for our select statement. Uh, now, the table aliases, you'll understand a little bit better when I create them in the from clause. So I have from space. And now, uh, this is doing a self-join, a self-join self uh, on the employees table by using an inner join, all right? So, so we're going to have from, and we'll have uh, employees is the name of the table, and we give it a table alias of E. Hit enter, and then now we're going to do the inner join, and we'll do employees, and we give that a table alias of M. So um, now, if you look up in the select statement, you know the first concatenation of the columns, last name and first name, uh, we were using the table alias of M, right? And we're going to name them as manager. And then the second concatenation in the select statement, we're using the table alias of E for the last name and first name. And those are going to be uh, listed as direct reports. So we give uh, back down to our inner join. We, we have the employees table with an alias of M and we'll say on, actually I'll, I'll do that down below. So on, on the M alias table, uh, employees table, employee number equal to the E table alias name uh, reports to. All right, so when that, so reports to is an employee number um, that is referencing the manager's employee number. So when we have the manager's employee number equaling to um, the reports to employee number, uh, that will list out all the direct reports for that manager by using the inner join. So once again, a self join is when you're using one table to, um, to reference information to sort of combine information and, and reference different information all within one table by using an inner join. So now I'm going to sort this out by, so I'll have order by, and I'm just going to sort it out by the, uh, the column alias name of manager. So up above in our select statement, the first concatenation of last name and first name we assign to a ta for, to a column alias name of as manager. So I'm going to sort by the, the column alias name of manager. And that's the end of my SQL statement. So I'm going to give it a semicolon at the very end. Uh, let's see, this all looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit the lightning bolt and run it.
and looks like I have an error down below and no database. The error says no database selected. Um, and once again, when I'm referencing my tables, I have to preface the table name with the database name. And I also have to do that in my inner join. All right, so that should correct my problem. I'll hit the lightning bolt again. It's fetching the rows. And if you look at the, in the middle of my screen, I have the result grid, uh, the return of the uh, queries that I just ran. And you can see the, the first manager is Bonder. So that's their last name, because it goes last name, comma, first name. I have Bonder Gerard. And the direct report is Bondor Louis. Then the next record is Bondor Gerard. So this is the manager. And I have uh, Hernandez Gerard. Or Gerard Hernandez. Sorry. All right. So uh, let's see if we scroll down. The next manager is uh, uh, Bo Anthony or Anthony Bo. And they have several direct reports. Uh, Leslie Jennings, Leslie Thompson, Julie Ferrelli, Steve Patterson, etc. All right. So this is how you use a self-join within a single table using an inner join to, to combine the data to give us direct reports to a manager and we list we're ordering it by the uh, manager's last name first name that's why bonder or Gerard bonder is on top that's the first record and the last record is uh will patterson All right, so now let's let's uh, move on to doing a self-join with a left join clause. So we just did the inner join clause with the self-join, and now we're going to use a left join clause. And let's say uh, I can keep some of this code that we already have written. All right, so now what we're going to be doing here is. Uh, so the president is the employee who does not have any manager or value in the reports to column. So the, um, there's no value in the reports to column for the president because he doesn't report to anybody. So he has a null value in the reports to column. So using a left join, we're going to, uh, we're going to include the president in our query, all right? So the way to do this is, um, let's see, why don't, I, why don't I start from scratch? So in our select, we're going to have, we're going to use the function if null, all right? And then parentheses. And then within the function, we're going to have the function concat in chat and we'll do m dash last name comma and then single quote comma single quote followed by a comma and then m dot first name parenthesis comma And we'll do all right. So that will concatenate. Well, I'll, I'll finish the whole statement before I explain it. And then we, so we'll have a comma, and then we'll have finger quote top manager 
Actually, I'm just going to put president. President. All right. And then, so that's a parenthesis. And then as manager, you know, for manager. You know, well, and then comma, and we have to move on to the next concatenation. Uh, let's say, oh, as manager, so I have concatenation, that, that, and then as president, if it's no, and then as manager, otherwise. And then I have it comma because I have to do another uh, part of the select statement. And this one's just a straight concat parentheses. And then it should be E. Because now I'm grabbing it from the E. Table alias. Last name. Comma. Single float, comma, single float, and then another comma. And the E, uh, first name. And close it out with a parenthesis. And then I'll do as direct report, which is what we had uh, with the first SQL statement that we did using an inner join. And that's it for the select. So. If you go back up to the first line uh, for the select, I have the function if null. So if if uh, there's a null value, um, then I want I want the column alias to be president. If if there is not a null in the in the value, then I want that table alias to be as manager. All right, and then we, we use the function inside the if null function called concat, which will concatenate the last name, comma, and then the first name. All right, so it's a little bit similar to what we just did. Now we have to do the, the from statement. From is going to be employees. Oh, got to remember the database name first. Plastic models dot employees, um, and that's going to have a table alias of e. That's the last time. But now instead of doing an inner join, we're going to do a left join, and this is going to be on the employees. Classic models of employees table. Employees table with the table alias of M on. So this would be M dot employee number, just like uh, last time, equal to E dot report to. And we're going to do an order by. And this is going to be on manager and descending order. All right, so it's manager descending order. And so that should be it. Okay. And uh, end your SQL statement with a semicolon. And let's give this a try. If I run it. I have manager, oh, I put that value as president. All right, so you have the heading manager. <clears throat> and there is no manager, so we, we gave it a, um, a value of president, right? Because if you look up in the select statement, if no, all right, so if there's no value, 
in the manager field, if there's no value for last name or first name for employees in the employees table, then it's got a no value and reassigned it president, all right? And the direct report is the actual president's name. So if you look at the first record in the result grid, it comes up with the, uh, the manager is the president, right? And the direct report is Diane Murphy. And then the rest of it is, um, is sorted out by uh, sorted out by the manager's name. So uh, the second record, third record, fourth record, fifth, fourth record. Uh, they're all William Patterson. So that's the manager's name. And then uh, to the uh, under the direct report for William Patterson is Andy Fister, Peter Marsh, and Tom King. And those three people report to William Patterson. All right. So that's how you do a, a self join. You know, the same table. You're grabbing data from the same table but we're using a left join. So I, I demonstrated how to use an inner join, how to use a left join, and how to use how to use uh, column aliases a little bit more uh, than we had done before. And then of course you have to use, when you're doing a self join, you have to use table aliases. Otherwise um, your, your SQL statement will, will blow up when you execute it. So, all right, so that's gonna be it for joins. Now I want to move on to group by, the group by clause. So the group by clause is uh, groups a set of rows into a set of summary rows by values of columns or expressions. The group by clause returns one row for each group. In other words, it reduces the number of rows in the result set. You often use the group by clause with aggregate functions, such as sum, average, mass, min, and count. In the uh, intro to SUL class, I, out of those aggregate functions, the only one I covered was count, where in the select statement, you do a, a select count, uh, parentheses and then uh, an asterisk uh, parentheses and then from the table you want to count so it you know it counts the number of records you want so uh, let's say the aggregate function that appears in the select clause provides information about each group all right the group by clause is an optional clause of the select statement and let's let's do our first example all right, so this is a very basic, simple group by clause, and we're going to be using the uh, orders table. All right, so I'm going to clean up my SQL code and get rid of that. All right, and you start by select. Oops, S -E -L -S -E -T. I'm going to select the status column from the orders table, and then below the, the from statement, you're going to do a group by, and I'm going to group by the status column. All right, so select status from orders, group by status. And I gotta remember to preface my table name with the database name. So classic models dot orders. All right. So I should be good to go right now. Uh, selecting status, group by status. All right. So I will run my query. It's fetching the data. All right. So the result grid. Uh, so all it shows is my statuses from the orders table. I have ship resolved, canceled, on hold, disputed, and in process. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an order by so I'll do an order by, I'll sort it by status also. And in ascending order. 
Okay, so. Now, uh, once the status is sorted, it's a little bit easier to, to understand what's in our table. So I have canceled, disputed, in process, on hold, resolved, and shipped, right? Okay. So what it did was it, it grouped all the records um, by status. So it took all the records and it found all the ones who have a status of canceled and it listed that status of canceled. Then it went and found all the records in my table that have a status of disputed and it listed disputed. If there were no records in there, in my table that, that didn't have a status of disputed, then in my result grid, disputed wouldn't have been listed. So, so group by, what it does is it groups things by a common um, value within a column and within a column. So in our example, the column is status and it grouped them by common statuses. So that's a very basic use of group by. Now, if you if you look at this, uh, if you look at this, uh, the, the result grid, um, something we covered back in uh, intro to SQL. In the select statement, so if I take out my group by, group by statuses, I can get the same result grid by doing a select distinct on statuses. So if I do a select, if I do a distinct parenthesis, I want select distinct statuses, I'll get the same thing, right? So if I run this and order, I'm, I'm still going to order by the, the statuses in ascending order. I run it, and if you look at the result grid, I get the same thing as when I use the group by. So select distinct is similar. It returns unique occurrences of the status values. All right, so now we want to use uh, the group by with an aggregate function. All right, so for example, if you want to know the number of orders in each status, you can use the count function with the group by clause function, or the group by clause. So let's see, I'm gonna get rid of this. So if I want to select status, I still want the column status, and but then I also want to do count of all the records. from the orders table, and I order by status, all right? So if I run this, what I'll get is I'll get, if you look in the result grid, I'll get all these statuses, right? That, that column will be the same. And then next to each status, you'll have a count of, of the number of uh, records in the, in the table, right? But next to each status, that, that total count of records in the in the table will be the same so I'm, I'm going to run this and show you how by using group by so what it did was it just listed the last status with a count so what we want is we want a count of the number of records for each status so by using group by, you can achieve that result. So group by status, all right, and we'll order by status, so I'll run it. All right, I mean, that's really handy. So if you look at the uh, result grid, you know, list the status in ascending order, and then, oh wow, shit. And then uh, the number of, records in the orders table that have that status and you can see shipped it's the last status and it's at 303 so um you know lots been shipped and 
but um, very few are, are canceled, disputed, in process. All right, so th that's a great way to use the group by. So now, to get the total num total amount of all orders by status, we're going to join the orders table with the order details table and use the sum aggregate function to calculate the total amount. So we want to get the total amount of all orders by status. All right, so how are we going to do this? Uh, let's start over. All right, so I'll wipe out my code and we'll start with a select. And I'm going to select status, comma, and I'll do the, I'm going to use the aggregate function sum. Let's see, and I will, I'm going to sum the column quantity ordered times the price each, parenthesis. All right, so I'm getting the sum of those, right? So um, by using the sum function, I can multiply two, two column values together. And I'm going to give it a table alias or a column alias as amount. All right. I don't need single quotes because the alias is uh, one word. Um, you only need single quotes for the alias if there are two words. So if I told it, if I told it total amount, I would need to surround that with single quotes. But I'm just holding it amount, so no quotes are necessary. All right, so that's it for the select statement. Now the from statement. Remember, we're uh, in this example, we're going to be using an inner join. So the from is from the order table, and then my next line, I'm going to have inner join. And this is going to be the order details table. And you're going to be using, let's see, order number. So the column order number, since it's similar, remember with the joins, when you have uh, two. When you're comparing two column names that are spelt exactly the same. So in this case, I can, I would, I can use, with the inner join, I can use on. Um, oh, but then I would need to say table aliases. So if I use, um, so if I do the table alias of O for orders, right, and table alias of OD for order details. Then I can do on for the inner join on o dot order number equals o d dot order number. Yeah, you need a table alias when you're using uh, same exact uh, column names. In this case, the column name is order number, and so it's, it's the same. So when you're using, uh, so when you use the on for an inner join, you have to have table alias names. All right, so next, lastly, we want our group by clause, and we're grouping by, once again, we're grouping by status, and then I'll end the sequel with a semicolon. And, oh, I forgot my, to preface my table name with a database name, orders, and this table name with the database name, uh, order details, special models, okay. All right, so I'm going to run this query. And if you look in the result grid in the middle of my screen, I have the column statuses, or status, and the amount. So what the amount is, is the quantity ordered, right, for that status, times 
the price each. All right. So uh, if you remember, shift was shift was um, had like I don't know 300 300 uh, records that were shipped that had a status of shipped. So so its amount is pretty huge. It looks like eight million, eight eight million eight hundred sixty-five thousand, whatever. Um, and you can see the other statuses, which had very a lot less records, um, their their amounts are, are quite small compared to the shipped amount. All right, so I want to show you with the inner join. If you have two column, if you're comparing two column names from two different tables, and those those column names are spelt exactly the same, we don't have to do on uh, order number equals order number. What we can do is we can just use using using parentheses, and then I put the column name in order number <clears throat> and this will give me my sa the same result as you can see in the result grid it gives me the same result, result with a, a bit less code and when you're able to use using for an inner join you also don't need the table aliases necessarily so i can take those off right because I'm just using, when you use the using clause, you just need the column name. Um, it's already given that the column name is the same in both tables that you're joining. All right, so that's how you would do. And I'll, I'll run this again now that I've taken the table aliases off. Order number, oh, using order number. Order details, orders. Mm, let's see what happened. You have an error in SQL, check the manual. Uh, let's say it's having trouble on order number. Using inner join order number. Group by status. Let's see if I take out these. I don't think it likes that. Any order is not from that. Here in SQL. There we go. I'm not sure what that error was, but um, I resolved it. All right, and that uh, the last this last one was without the table aliases included. All right, so let's see what else with the group by. Um, similarly, uh, let's see. Um, so if we want to return the order number and the total amount of each order, we would do the following, the following token, correct? So let's uh, get rid of these. So we don't need an inner join in this case. So if I do, I'm gonna do a select and we're gonna, we're gonna just grab this information off a single table. So we don't need a join. We're just gonna grab it from the order details table. So I want order number, right? So I want I want my query to return my order number, and for each order number, the total amount of that order, which would be the quantity ordered times the price each. So I want to select order number, and then I want to select using the sum function, parenthesis, and then quantity ordered. Space asterisk price each parenthesis as and I'll say as total. And enter now I'm going to do from 
And this is from the classic models database that order details. Hit enter. And then lastly, we want a group by, group by clause. And we're gonna group by order number. All right, so every order, any record that has the same order number is going to take the uh, quantity order times the price each and put that into a column alias of total. All right. Oh, and I want to end my SQL with a semicolon, not a P, semicolon. Hit the lightning bolt and look at the, re the middle of my screen, the result grid returns order number. And it starts with 10, 1, 0, 100 with a total order of 102, 10,223. All right, so. Um, the order number is already sorted, even though I don't have a, I don't have an order by. Oh, real quick, um, I'm just going to add an order by. I want to order by total, right? So I'll do order, order by, and we're going to order by total. Uh, Let's see what happens there. All right, so I'm going to order it by um, descending order. So I use the DESC command. If you don't put anything in there, um, then it, it defaults to ascending or ASC. So I should get the top amount first. So I have a total of 67, the top amount is 67,392. And it goes all the way down to the bottom. Unless there are a ton of records, so I'm not going to go all the way. All right, so that's another great way to use order by. Now, how about using or, uh, another way, great way to use root by, not order by. So another way to use root by is with is an expression. So in addition to columns, you can group rows by expression. The following query gets the total sales for each year. So let's uh, let's say look at that query. All right. So uh, I'm going to start from scratch. All right. So you have to start with your select. So this is using the group by clause with an expression. So I'm going to select, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to use the aggregate function of year, parenthesis, and then I'll put the order date, parenthesis, and I'll give that a column alias as year, comma. And then, then I'm going to do um, the, the aggregate function of sum. And this, this will have the quantity ordered times the price each, and say as total. And from now, you're going to have to use an inner join on this because we're using the order table and the order details table. So, from classic database, model, classic models database, the orders hit enter. And here I'll do my inner join. Order details. Enter, and I'm going to, this time I'm instead of using on and and writing out the uh, the comparison between the, the two columns, uh, since the column the order number column 
name is spelled exactly the same in both the order table and the order details table. So I can use the using clause, using, and that's parenthesis, and then it's going to be order number, parenthesis, hit enter. Now we have to use our, our filtering where clause. So we have where status equals shipped. Right, because remember, we are trying to, uh, let's see, um, we're trying to get total sales for the year, right? So although any record that has a status of shipped is a sale, right? If you have a status of disputed, canceled, um, you know, in progress, that's not a sale yet. So we want to get the the uh, the amount for the year. And so we're only looking at statuses. That's why we're using the where clause, and we're only looking at status that's going to be equal to ship. All right. So enter. And then finally, we have to do our group by. And this is going to be using the column alias from above of year. Oops, year. Or, no, sorry. We're going to group by year order date. Year order date as year. So if we do year, I think we can just group by the, the column alias of year. It has to be spelled the same as, as how you find it up in your select statement. So it's as capital Y, lowercase so E-A-R, and that's what I put down in my group by statement. And since this is the end of our SQL statement, we're going to do a semicolon to finish it off. All right, let's uh, run it and see what happens. Mm, select rear, year, order date as no debate, no, no database selected. So in my inner join, I, in my from statement, I put the classic models database dot orders, but my order details, I did not. Models that order details all right so now i should be able to run this and i believe it works yeah all right all right so it listed three years worth of data if you're leaving the result grid middle of my screen it lists three years of data 2003 four and five and this is the total amount of sales or total amount of quantity order times price each um, that have a status of shipped. So you can see, uh, hopefully you can see how gr the group by clause can do amazing things with your data. All right, so I uh, just want to cover one more thing with group by. Uh, let's see. For today. All right, so I want I want you to see the group by clause with the having clause. All right, so let's see. I'll start from the beginning again. All right, this is once again going to be using a inner join. All right, so to filter the groups returned by a group by clause, you use a having clause. The following query, all right, so I'm gonna uh, list a query that uses a having clause to select the total sales of the years after 2003. Total sales of the years after 2003. All right, so I should just bring back my query 
because we're, we're going to use the same exact query that we had before using, using the, um, so we, we came up with the total amount of sales by year, right? And so if you leave the result grid, it returned um, in our database, in our tables, we only have three years worth of data. So for 2003, it listed the total of four and five, all right? And um, when, you're, when you're using the group by clause, there's a having clause that, that works with the group by clause to sort the, the data from the group by. All right, so all we have to do with this query, so this is, we want to list, um, by using the having clause, we want to list total sales of the years after 2003. All right, so underneath the group by clause, I'm going to list the having clause, having, and then I will do my, I'll do the year, right? I'll do year greater than 2003, right? So um, if you look at the result grid, it should just return 2004 and 2005. It should skip over 2003. So I'll hit the lightning bolt and execute my code, and that's exactly what happens in my result grid. I now only have 2004 and 2005. Um, anything else we can do with having? So of course, if I said uh, greater than, or what if I said uh, we're year or having year not equal not equal to 2004. All right, so I use the estimation point equal sign for not equal. And now when I run this query, it should return the year 2003 with the total and the year 2005 with the total. And if you look in the result grid, that's exactly what it returns, 2003 and 2005. So when you're using the group by clause, there's also a way to, to filter the data is uh, by using, also using the having clause. All right. So now using the having clause, you can, you can create um, complex conditions by using the and or the or clause. So, so say you want to find the orders that have total amounts greater than a thousand and contain more than 600 items. So the way we would do that using the group by and the having clauses, we would start with our select and we're going to select a few things. We're going to select the order number. We're going to use the, the function sum. And we're going to do the quantity ordered. And we're doing as items count, comma. And then we'll use the function sum. And we'll do the price E. Times quantity ordered. Let's see. As the column alias total. And enter that space, and now we'll do our from. And this is going to be from the order details table. Oh, 
Firstly, I'll start preface it with the classic models database name. Classic models. Oops. Order details. Classic models. Hit enter. And here's where we enter our group by clause. And we're going to group it by the order number. And finally, we're going to have our having clause, which is going to be total. I'm using the column alias of total greater than a thousand. And we're making this a complex conditional. So, and the column alias items count greater than 600. So, make sure. All right, so let's give this a run. Once again, we're trying to find the orders that have total amounts greater than a thousand and contain more than 600 items in the order so if i run it good that's it um so if you look at the um i'm going to change the the items count column alias to uh something that provides a better heading in our result grid here our heading uh of items count comes out whatever however we uh gave it uh, column alias name. So since I'm going to have two words, I need it wrapped in single quotes. So I'll capitalize the item, I and item, space and capital C in count, and I'll give it a single quote to wrap it. So now my, my column alias is item space count with a capital I and a capital C. And I'll just run it really quick again. And unknown column. Oh, oh, that's right. Um, when you change the column alias, like I did in the select statement, so I'm also referencing it down here in the having clause. So I need single uh, quote items count beautiful, and that should work. And let's see, no records came out. Items count. Greater than 600. So totals more than a thousand. Let's see if I can just run this. All right, total more than a thousand. And so the problem is no records came out because I had total greater than a thousand. And, and now, did you notice what it did? Was I highlighted? I highlighted the code that I wanted to run. And I didn't include the and item sound greater than 600 because when I ran all that SQL, the whole SQL, nothing came back. So I just wanted to see, are there any records that come back if I just have having total greater than a thousand? So I highlighted that part of the code and hit the lightning bolt. And it, whatever you highlight when you hit the lightning bolt, it will run that part that's highlighted. All right. so. When I when I run just this, uh, returning records that have a total greater than a thousand, um, then you can see the item count is no. There's there's one record here that's greater than six hundred. So not sure why that returned nothing. I see one. There's two, three. So there's a few records that should have been returned. So let me see what the problem is. Greater than a thousand. And items count greater than 600. And it returns nothing. All right. So let's, uh, let me go back to, um, I'm calling it this. Let's see if that's maybe the problem item. Uh, ah, that the comment as item 
No? <clears throat> Comma. And then this would be item count. I mean, your items count the way it was. All right, so now I'm going to run this. And ah, see, that worked. Hmm, that's weird. It didn't like the alias with uh, two different names. So I put it back to the single name alias of items count. Hmm. And now it returns quite a few records. All right, you can see, um, why don't I do an order by so we can see our data a little bit better. <clears throat> so below the having clause, I'll do an order by clause. And why don't I sort it by I sort of by items. Yeah. And I'll sort it by descending order. Yeah. And sort it by ascending. And when you sort by ascending in the order by clause, you don't have to list uh, ASC for ascending. It's it's the default. So. I'll run it. And now my item count is sorted by, and some have similar counts. So I'm going to um, add to the order by, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to sort by item count, and then I'm going to sort by total. All right, so the first record is 601, second record, that's 601 also for items count. And uh, so the first record has a total of 47,000 and section one has a total of 55,000. So they're being sorted by uh, in ascending order, both the items count and then by total within items count. All right, so um, just another way of, of, using the, um, of using the having clause within a group by clause. And uh, so you can see I use the and uh, command for a comp to create a complex condition, which which was uh, you know a total greater than a thousand. The other condition that had to be met was item count had to be greater than six hundred. You could also use instead of and you could use or. So if I, if I run this, it's going to be listing all the records that are greater than 1,000 and all the records that are greater, that have an item count of greater than 600. So we get quite a few more, um, quite a few more records with an or command in there rather than the and. So, so you can see now I've got, I've got these records, um, all have uh, item count that are less than 600, but they have a total that's greater than 1,000. So it's going to list quite a few records. So, um, so that's it for, uh, for the group by. Um, I hope you learned a lot today uh, and, and you see the benefits of using the group by to group your data uh, the way you want it and then to be able to use the having uh, clause within group by to filter out uh, the groupings of data. So uh, thanks for joining me for the second session of advanced SQL using MySQL database. Um, uh, and uh, please, uh, if you've been invited to my Google Classroom, please make sure you accept the invitation and go out there and uh, into Google Classroom and uh, check out the exercises. And if you have any questions, please contact me and um, I'll get right back to you. All right, thanks a lot for joining me.